Hello and welcome to Latte Firm for a short feature on the battle to become Arsenal number one. Lots of people have had their say. David Ryer, of course, has joined Arsenal on a season-long loan with a view to a permanent move. But what does it mean for Aaron Ramsdale? What does it mean for Mikel Arteta? What is he going to do after this international break? I am delighted to be joined by the goalkeeping expert, legend that he is, John Harrison. John, welcome back to the firm. How are you, my friend? Cheers. No, thanks for having me again. I'm, I'm glad to be on. Always enjoyed our, our chats and I'm looking forward to another one. And listen, you talk about our chats. It was a it was a, a pivotal moment in the growth of this channel. We did a breakdown on Aaron Ramsdale when he joined Arsenal all those months ago, a couple of years ago now. And the views and the comments on that were absolutely record breaking. And I'm so glad that you were part of that conversation. So I'm delighted to have you back uh, today. Obviously, we're going to cover David Raya. So if, as I bring up the slides, if you're tuning in for the first time, please do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, of course, and get involved in the chat. Uh, John, straight off the bat, uh, we're going to talk about obviously David Raya's arrival. Um, you know, what do we know about David? Uh, 27 years of old, of age. Uh, he's been an integral part of Brentford's football in recent seasons. He played all 38 Premier League games last season. He was, of course, born in Barcelona, uh, moved to England at 16 years of age and signed for Blackburn Rovers, I think, from memory. Um, had a short term loan in the National League, then, of course, signed for Brentford, made 161 appearances for Thomas Frank's team, was involved in the uh, English Football League, secured promotion, won a golden glove at that level. And of course, now is a well-established goalkeeper in the Premier League and, of course, a Spanish international. Straight off the bat, um, why do you think Arsenal have signed David Raya? I mean, he's an established number one goalkeeper. We have an established, or what I thought <laughs> was an established goalkeeper in Ram, Aaron Ramsdale. How has this kind of gone down in the goalkeeping world? Yeah, I think, firstly, it was a little bit of a surprise, like you say. But I think the reason they've signed David Raya is because David Raya is a really good goalkeeper. So in our models at uh, goalkeeper.com and goalkeeper XG, we found David Raya was the fourth best goalkeeper in the, in the Premier League last year in terms of his overall goals value. So that's not just his shot stopping, but his cross claiming, sweeping, distribution, basically every action he could do, he was ranked as the, the fourth most valuable keeper. For, for context, Ramsdale was seventh. So Ramsdale had a, a decent season, um, but not quite in the top echelons of the top few goalkeepers, whereas Raya is more like that. So I assume that's the reason they've signed him. But as, as you said, it is a bit of a weird one because Ramsdale's the younger goalkeeper. So you'd imagine Ramsdale's already around the seventh best keeper, that kind of thing. So like European level goalkeeper for Arsenal. And you expect him to keep improving and kind of keep pushing up the levels. And we might talk about, yeah, some of the, the areas where Ramsdale could work on to try and get to that sort of level. But that's what you'd assume would be the natural progression for, for Aaron. And this causes a little bit of potentially a hiccup there. Um, but it's one of those things where we've not really seen it done before. So I don't think in memory, there's been many sort of title challenging teams who have brought in a clear other number one to challenge for it. And I think it's one of those things we don't have enough data points to know if, is this going to upset Ramsdale and make him potentially a, a worse goalkeeper? And then Raya comes in and maybe then Raya's affected by having Ramsdale breathing down his neck or actually, are they both going to push each other on? I think it's a, a super difficult one to judge. And we don't really know what's in this contract with Raya. Like we don't know. Maybe it's a loan and he knows he's definitely going to play Carabao Cup, Champions League group stage and FA Cup or something like that. And then Ramsdale will play the Champions League and maybe if they get to the Champions League, knockouts, the knockouts. There might be something like that and they're both super happy. But at the moment, like you said, coming back from the international break, the last time this sort of happened, Leno was dropped, Ramsdale was straight in, he wasn't going to be a number two, and then the rest is history. So Arteta's got a, got past the um, experience of just being like, yep, I think Raya's now the better goalkeeper, he's going straight in. So it wouldn't surprise me if that happened, but at the same time, it would also surprise me because I think Ramsdale's been a, been a great goalkeeper for Arsenal. He has indeed. And there's some really interesting points that you mentioned that kind of prompted me into thinking. I mean, this is there's a few factors here. Um, Aaron Ramsdale's come in. He's done a great job. He has established himself as the number one goalkeeper. But of course, there are circumstances to consider around our number two, our backup. Matty Turner didn't really have the time that he maybe would have wanted at Arsenal, wanted to be a regular in the Premier League and talked quite openly just recently about wanting to have that game time. And, and as a goalkeeper who's largely unused, you have a very short window. If you get an opportunity to make the move into the Premier League, you know, you go for it. Um, the more you don't play, the, the difficult it gets, I guess. And I guess the other the factor here is that, you know, we've been 
interested or keen in David Raya for, for some time. You know, our goalkeeping coach has obviously got a strong link with him, formerly having coached him. Uh, Arteta, I think, and Arsenal have made noise about David Raya in windows of past. And, and, and of course, the circumstances, you know, his contract was due to expire. We've signed him on a loan deal, which I thought was quite uh, peculiar. Uh, but I understand it's because of maybe circumnavigating the sort of FFP uh, rules and whatnot. So look, like you say, it's a loan deal, perhaps with triggers in in that sort of clause about numbers of appearances, which could turn it into a permanent described be signed. But it's just really interesting. And and to your final point about the interesting dynamic, I mean, it's something we've not seen before. You know, two established number one goalkeepers going neck to neck um, and fighting with one another for that jersey. Uh, I think as an Arsenal fan base and as fan base in general, you know, you always want your club to have top players in every position competing for one another. But goalkeeping so unique. You know, it's over the years we've been so used to having one established number one who will play 70, 80, 90 percent of the games. You get the backup goalkeeper. There was, an, you know, the introduction of, of having cup, cup goalkeepers that, that you know, has, has sort of... Um, appeared out of nowhere over the last, what, six to ten years. That seems to be part of the culture. Now, maybe Mikel is revolutionising that. Maybe he is going to have two established number one goalkeepers to really keep them on their toes. It's really fascinating. I mean, as we get to know David Raya, you mentioned he's the older goalkeeper. He has been an established number one. And as you can see, courtesy of this image from Arsenal.com, he is going to come here to be Arsenal number one, isn't he, John? Yeah, I, I assume so. Like he's literally in the sort of prime years of his career now. Like let's say he does sign past the loan and signs a whatever three, four, five year deal, who will then spend the best years of his career at Arsenal if that then does happen. And I think he he should be battling to be Spain's number one. For me, it's always been a little bit weird that Unai Simon has started for Spain once we've had once Raya and um, Sanchez and those sort of goalkeepers have got in the squad. I assumed they would then be the, the successors to De Gea. And it seems like Unai Simon sort of got the stop gap and he's now in there. But actually in the big tournaments, in the World Cups and the Euros, he had a good penalty shootout, I think, in, in, in the Euros and helped Spain there. But actually, still in that tournament and then into the World Cup in Qatar, Unai Simon was sort of a bit of a weak link and nearly cost Spain getting through to the to the knockout stages against Japan. So um, yeah, for, for me, he's an area Spain can improve. And I would want David Raya to be playing that. But obviously, if he's not playing at club level, I think it's very, very difficult for him to then play internationally. So, yeah, for me, I think he has to go there thinking he can be number one. Otherwise, it's a nonsense move because he, he needs to establish himself as Spain's number one and needs to establish himself as a current Premier League keeper. So I, I assume he does believe that. And that's why I was so interested in what the terms of the contract were. Because for me, looking from the outside in, I think both goalkeepers are unhappy with this. If it's just your standard, like vanilla, you're both coming in, whoever plays better is going to get the jersey. Because I think both of them have got a little bit too much to lose there. Like Ramsdale is in a sort of great position. He's just challenged for the, he initially was challenging for the Champions League. He had a season doing that. Now he's had a season charging for the title. And now Arsenal with the additions of Rice and Havertz and the various other players you've brought in are really going to challenge again Man City for that title. I think Ramsdale wants to be playing those games. He doesn't want to be one of the players that's getting sort of moved on and pushed out. He's a young player in that group of Arsenal young players who wants to sort of grow with the club. So he'll be a little bit, oh, what's going on here with the signing of Raya? And similarly, if Raya sits on the bench for the next 10, 15 games or whatever, I'm sure then he's going to get disgruntled. But like you said, maybe Arteta's bringing in a new style of, of how to have two top goalkeepers. Because I think Arteta did say, if someone gets an injury, if like Ramsdale suddenly does his ACL or something horrible, like if they were to bring in Turner or if they were to bring in goalkeepers they'd have previously, there'd then be a big bit of, there'd be a big worry. They'd be like, oh, we're gonna have to change our style. We can't quite play how we used to play. Whereas with Raya, it's gonna be a like for like replacement and it wouldn't actually affect Arsenal too much. And I think maybe it's a it's a knock on of that that season when they got a load of defensive injuries and then failed to get the top four. And then last season, they again had the centre-back injuries and they had to bring Holding in. And obviously, it wasn't all Holding's fault that Arsenal's season tailed off. But not having Saliba or Gabriel or Ben White in their correct positions across that back four or have them playing at all, obviously disrupted Arsenal. So I think maybe Arteta's decided that this season, he can't have a, oh, wow, Ramsdale did his ACL with 10 games to go and we had the season tailed off again. Do you know, I think that is an excellent point. And, and obviously, 
you know, there's been lots made of of improving or raising the floor in in the squad. And exactly like you've articulated, to lose a significant player like William Saliba, forget about who came in, and but it completely disrupted our style of play, the build up that we had from the back, the the, the sheer confidence that we had of being that ball dominant, high pressing sort of team. Um, and yeah, you know, on the one hand, you have to commend the club and the manager for thinking, right, you know, here's an opportunity for us to go into the market, spend three million quid on a loan for a year, see how it goes, bring in a top goalkeeper. Um, that if Aaron Ramsdale isn't available for whatever reason, or there is a bit of rotation required because you know, mentally it's quite a challenging position on the pitch, um, there is going to be no drop in quality. That's a really, really excellent point, John. The only thing that comes into my mind is you know, like outfield players where at least you'll get maybe 15, 20 minutes off the bench or it's much easier to rotate or you play in a slightly different position. Unless David Raya can be used as a right back or as a holding <laughs> midfielder, um, you know, it's unlikely that he that either of these goalkeepers are going to make substitute appearances unless Mikel does something really wacky with the, you know, added injury time and whatnot or in-game scenarios. So I would expect either of these goalkeepers to consider um, you know, lengthy spells on the sidelines. And, you know, you obviously know goalkeeping much better than I do. And, you know, mentally, just talk to him about that before we compare player yeah. styles and strengths and weaknesses. Um, Aaron, we know, is a very strong lad mentally. You know, we've all read the recent Players Tribune uh, uh, story that he wrote so wonderfully about some of the battles and challenges that he's had in his life and in his family. We know that he's played, you know, important roles at relegation-threatened clubs and he's always been, you know, player of the season and whatnot. We covered all of that in the breakdown. Um, so mentally, these guys have to be so sharp, so focused, but it can be quite a lonely position. It can be quite a lonely place. You know, you train separate from the first team because you do your goalkeeping drills. You you have a camaraderie between one another. You don't play as much games as, like I've just mentioned, outfield players. How big a challenge is that going to be for, for David and for Aaron? Yeah, so I think that is the biggest thing why I think it was a weird move. I think it was a straightforward move. Like if you can buy the on a loan for a few million quid, the fourth best goalkeeper in the Premier League, that feels like a no-brainer. But it's then the issue of how does that mould your goalkeeper group? And I think Peter Schmeichel and Brad Friedel and a few other ex-goalkeepers, maybe it was Schwarzer as well, came out and did interviews saying they thought it was a really weird deal and they thought it was really disruptive because the traditional thinking is you shouldn't have two very similar quality goalkeepers. And the reason behind this psychologically is... You can imagine you're going into a game playing and you've been it's great for training. You've been pushed all week. You're trying to make sure, can I, we're doing the volleys. I'm making sure I'm catching every single one. And at least if I don't, I'm not dropping as many as he does. Or, right, we're doing a shot-stopping drill. If he's letting in three, I need to let in two or one or maybe zero. Like, it's good for training. But once you get in a game, you're going to be thinking, oh, if I make a mistake, is Mikel next week just going to be like, done now, the other guy's in. One mistake, too many. Or if I don't do this pass quite right, or if I don't, and you start second guessing things. Obviously, these goalkeepers are ridiculously mentally tough and ridiculously good at football, but it does add a level of indecision. And I think, as we've done on talked on the breakdown before, so much of goalkeeping is about slight positional adjustments and a decision of when to rush out and when to hold. A decision of can I claim that cross? And if I do, is it a punch or is it a catch? It's all tiny decisions. And in milliseconds, you have to make these decisions. So if you're half thinking, oh, I better not make a mistake oh, do I really need to do that? That's a millisecond more you've delayed your decision. And so that's often why these top-level goalkeepers have said you don't want two number ones because you want to know when you go back to training on Monday after playing on the Saturday, you're still number one, regardless of what happens. You throw in a couple of goals, you have a bad game, or your man match have the best game possible. That shouldn't affect your confidence going to the next game. Like ideally, ideal psychology for the goalkeeper is don't let the highs be too high, don't let the lows be too low, and just... Be confident in yourself and your decision making and your quality. But if you've got a guy breathing down your neck who you know is in and around the same level as you, it can then disrupt that and make you play worse. And similarly, when Raya, let's say that does happen to Aaron and Raya comes in, it's the same for Raya. He knows if I start badly, they'll just bring Rambo straight back. So it makes the position hard for both if there isn't a clear, you're my number one, I'm sticking with you. Okay, if you have a bad five, six, seven weeks, I might drop you and take you out of the firing line. But Game, game to game, you're the guy I trust. And I think that's why a lot of the ex-pros came sort of out, well, ex-goalkeeper pros came out like against the move. But it was more of a, obviously it's a no-brainer for Arsenal to buy him, but you don't want to sacrifice Ramsdale because he is the younger keeper. And that's the, 
if Raya was younger than Ramsdale, I'd half get it because I think Raya would then be a little bit happier to stay on the bench for mm -hmm. a few months or whatever. But as we discussed before, Raya is at the potentially now going to be into the peak of his goalkeeping career. So he won't want to sit on the bench and he won't want to do that. So potentially you're going to either risk losing Ramsdale to another club, which I think will be a big mistake, or risk just causing disruption. And maybe, like I said at the start, Mikel's got a big plan. It's all in the contract. They're both happy with what's going to happen. He's not going to do any weird chopping and changing based on performances, and that's not a problem. But from the outside looking in, it is, it is hard to know how that won't affect both goalkeepers psychologically. It really is. Um, and, I, you know, it's intriguing. It's fa like on the one hand, I really want to see how this sort of unfolds and I want to see the interesting dynamics and how they spar with one another sort of, you know, on a week by week basis and, you know, what the camaraderie is like and what, you know, David Raya being trained by his former coach, Ramsdale, you know, does he feel like a bit of an outsider at the moment? All of these things are going to be so fascinating to see, but hopefully not at the cost of the club and, and hopefully Mikel knows exactly what he's doing. Um, yeah. Let's move on to the playing styles and compare the two goalkeepers. This is courtesy of the excellent work that you've been doing for uh, goalkeeper.com. I mean, do you want to just talk us through very quickly goalkeeper.com and, and how you came about these stats? And then let's just get straight into the detail. Yeah. So, yeah, as you, as you said correctly, I'm the head of data science for, for goalkeeper.com and goalkeeper XG. And it's a company that um, I co-founded and set up about, about a year ago now and love in a great way for me because i really enjoy doing it we're basically goalkeeper data analysts so we basically work with professional football clubs to help improve their current goalkeepers but also scout and recruit new ones and also to help their academy system and help with their education and finally we do stuff like this so we've also been on sky sports and espn and various channels like that to give them data and allow them to better understand the position of goalkeeping so that, that is and all and latte firm. yeah and latte <laughs> firm. exactly exactly um, so what do we see on screen then? So, I mean, we've obviously got Aaron Ramsden on the left. He's our current goalkeeper. David Raya, our new boy, on the right-hand side. And a number of metrics and, you know, playing traits in the middle. Do you want to just talk us through it sort of line by line and explain what they mean and why they're yeah. coloured and what the pluses and minuses are? Exactly. So on the, the left-hand side, I see in the sort of top section of the table, that's Aaron Ramsdale last year. So how he played for, for Arsenal last year. And I think sort of indicative, if we just start with the top one, shot-stopping by you in goals, Basically, at goalkeeper.com and goalkeeper XG, we have built a model that uses historic data to look at how likely a shot is to go in, using all the crucial variables, the shots, velocity, where it's from, if it was a one-on-one, -on -one, all that fun stuff. And every shot basically gets a, that should probably go in 20% of the time, 30% of the time, 50% of the time. For an example, the Rashford goal that he scored against Aaron this season will be expected to go in over about 75% of the time. So while it was savable, obviously he got a hand to it. Majority of the time, an average Premier League keeper doesn't save that because of the power on it and where it's heading towards the far corner. Whereas a shot straight down the middle from like 50 yards going at 20 miles an hour will be saved like 99.999% of the time. Very rarely it will be thrown in. So over a season, you can look at every single shot the keeper faces and be like, did he save as many as an average keeper will be expected to? So you can see last year, Aaron saved about a goal more, so 0.9 more than expected. And interestingly, with Aaron, it comes in spurts. That's not because he basically conceded the ones he should and saved the ones he should. He let in quite a few goals that he shouldn't have, that he should have definitely saved, but also made incredible world-class saves. So the ones that spring to my mind are the saves against Liverpool, the top corner Mo Salah curler, and the one-on-one -on -one forced out of position against Canate. Both of those would be expected to be saved. I think both of them are less than about 15% of the time. Like wow. majority of the time, 80 plus percent of the time they're going in and he saves them. But then you have goals like the James Madison one against him for Leicester, where it's a shot straight down the middle and it just goes through his legs or the Southampton, um, what, actually the Southampton goal where he made the passing mistake, he could have also saved. And then he made the first mistake doing the bad pass, which we'll get to in a bit. But then actually if he backs off a few more yards it's actually a pretty slow curling shot that isn't near the corner that he gets mm -hmm. a full hand to but then can't push it around the post and again that will have been penalized in, in this model so Aaron always seems to come around about average in shot stopping but it's because he has some really high highs and some really low lows and I think as a goalkeeper of his age profile if he can tend away from making those shot stopping mistakes and just solidify that part he's making enough world-class saves to be a massive value to Arsenal in terms of shot stopping 
But at the moment, as you can see from last year anyway, the, the, the sort of shot stopping mistakes out well didn't outweigh, they slightly underweighed because he was worth about a goal, the, the shot stopping. Whereas you can see on the right hand side with David Raya at Brentford last season, he has a huge score there of plus eight, where he basically saved eight shots more than you'd expect. And that was because while Raya also made some big saves like Ramsdale, none quite as good, I don't think, as his saves against Salah and, and Canate, but he consistently didn't make, he didn't let in any like only 10% chance for goal, only 5% chance for goal. That didn't happen to Raya. So over the course of the season, he was a, a better shot stopper. So in terms of shot stopping, modeling and, and performance, I think you can comfortably say Raya has the advantage there. But the next line is where I think Aaron Ramsdale has a real big advantage. And it's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. So I think when people talk about Ramsdale, they're a little unsure sometimes. Oh, why is the Arsenal number one if his shot stopping is average? But it's his shot preventing. So what that means is coming and sweeping up through balls, catching crosses and handling shots. So you parry them away from danger rather than straight back into danger. And you can see here, this is where Ramsdale outperformed right last year. So he basically saved Arsenal about three goals if you round up because of coming for extra crosses, sweeping up extra through balls, parrying balls into non-dangerous areas where other keepers might parry it and there was a rebound shot. So that's a real strength of Aaron's and yeah, worth no three goals. Whereas Raya is good at that. He's above average in the Premier League. That's what the green means. The, the no colour means around average and mm -hmm. green means in the top sort of uh, 30%, whereas grey would mean in the bottom sort of 30%. So yeah. Raya is good at that, but not quite as good as Aaron. Can I just ask a quick question on the yeah. plus eight for David Raya? I mean, ha, forgive me for asking what may be a basic question to you, but uh, just for my own curiosity, how do you weight it for quality of defence? I mean, Arsenal won't face that many shots and, yeah. um, you know, the, the margins at that level are so much higher. You know, if, if you're going to concede a good chance, it, it's likely the opposition are going to score, whereas David Raya is presumably going to be pummeled with shots and there might be some nice, you know, camera saves and nice, easy chances for him to pick up. I mean, does that, does that come into consideration at all? Yeah. So the, the way it's all modeled, as I said before, is each shot is taken individually. So there's no sort of bias on a shot by shot level of facing more shots. Like everything is looked at on an individual level. So if that shot's Got a 50 percenter, you. you've saved it. If, if you haven't, you've conceded it, et cetera. But you are right in that potentially, because Aaron will only face whatever, 100 shots on target a season, whereas David Ryan might face 150 or something like that, Aaron will never be able to outperform as well. So normally, if you were really fairly comparing them, you would probably use save percentage versus expected save percentage, yeah. because then it normalizes for the number of shots they faced. Um, okay. Obviously, in this case, it wouldn't make a huge difference if Ryan had faced 50% more shots. Um, but obviously it is an important thing to look at so potentially if we were we were doing it in a more fair manner we'd look at save percentage versus expected save percentage the reason we don't is because obviously we like to look at the overall goalkeeper value and if you turn it into a percentage you can't then combine it easily with the shot preventing score and the distributing score but yeah sure. indeed that that's how the the most fair way of doing it is being like given the amount of shots they faced how much did they overperform or given the yeah or how much did they underperform etc Thank the you, John. Uh, sh should we move yeah. on to distribution value then? Yes, exactly. So distribution value now looks at every single pa back pass they receive and is like, how likely now are Arsenal to score given the pa or Brentford in the case of Raya last season, given the pass the goalkeeper plays? So my, my favourite example for this is you might have a goal kick, which something like, I think it's about five in 10,000 or maybe it's more, maybe it's like five in 5,000, maybe it's like one in 1,000 in between that kind of value. It's a small value. Goal kicks result in goals in terms of the sequence after the goal kick results in a goal. And if the goalkeeper plays a really nice pass somehow through balls, puts the guy in one on one, suddenly obviously that's like a 30% chance for goal. So they've massively increased the probability. But usually for a goal kick, they might hit it up for a duel, a 50 50 header inside the opposition half. And that will have some associated value of if the duel is won or if the duel is lost, this is the probability of Arsenal scoring, this is the probability of the opposition scoring. And you can do that after every every pass, basically. And you can see which are the guys that are adding probability and which are the guys that are actually doing below average passes. So another good example is obviously Ramsdale, when he passed it to the Southampton player, suddenly turned what is usually a small probability Arsenal score from that little passing sequence into quite a large probability that Southampton are going to score because they've got a direct shot in a one-on-one -on -one scenario against the goalkeeper. 
Um, but then similarly, some of Ramsdale's beautiful sidewind ping passes out to the wingers might suddenly put Saka in on a one-on-one -on -one with a fullback and there might be a five in a hundred chance that goes in. But when the ball was in Ramsdale's hands, it was like a one in a thousand. So he's increased the XG there. So over the course of the season, you can look at all the passes the goalkeeper plays and you can see Ramsdale was worth about 0.4 goals, which would have been a lot higher if it wasn't for some of the mistakes he made on the ball. Um, sure. David Raya, again, he had a lot more of the ball. So this hasn't been normalized for, well, how many passes did he have to attempt? But David Raya basically had a distributing value of almost a goal. And the reason really, I think both of these guys are quite similar on the ball, though. Um, they both do really good passes. But David Raya also does make mistakes on the ball. So his Southampton moment was against Newcastle, where he had a pass under very little pressure. And he just side-footed it straight to a Newcastle striker, who I think it was Almiron who then ran in and, and yeah. finished it. And it cost them a goal. So both of them are great distributors, but they do have a tendency to make mistakes on the ball. Neither of them are sort of infallible in, 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 in that regard. And as you can see, that the bottom line overall goalkeeper value is just be just before we do the overall combined. goalkeeper value. Yeah, yeah, just before we do the goalkeeper value, something that's just triggered in my mind as you were talking about just distribution in general. You know, we talk about the goalkeepers not you know, one of the goalkeepers is not going to get enough game time. But I guess the impact at training. So when Mikel does the team on team drills to know that both goalkeepers are going to be fairly equal in how they pick up the ball and distribute it, even within like training drills on the training pitch, you know, if they're doing like five on five or if they're doing it team A versus team B or, you know, the drop from Ramsdale to let's say Turner respectfully um, and ones and twos that we've had in the past is just not going to be there anymore. So actually it has a really great benefit because I know Mikel does different drills with different players and you've got different back four for one team, a different back four for the other team, but actually that familiarity that, that, that it, I guess it, I guess both, both teams are going to be a bit more even on the training field, you know, not that one, what, not one team's going to have a superior goalkeeper and the other's going to have a largely inferior one. They're both going to be awesome. So the impact yeah. actually could be really positive. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think I mentioned before, like in training, at least between the two of them, but also in training as the whole team, you're completely right that actually I think it's a definite positive in, in that environment. It's the match day environment where the psychology comes into it and only one of them is playing, like you're saying, that the problem is. But definitely for training, I think having two top number ones is a, is a really, really good thing. Okay. So talk to us about the overall goalkeeping value. Yeah. So that is then just everything combined. So every single action the goalkeeper does or could do. So I don't know if I've made it clear, but a cross that comes in the box that the keeper doesn't claim or a, um, yeah, a shot that obviously goes in or a through ball that the keeper doesn't sweep is also counted in these models. And so if you just stayed on your line and didn't do anything, you'd be heavily penalized. Um, so all of those actions are looked into, all the actions the goalkeeper could do or could uh, or did do, and you get a score. So you can see this is where I was talking earlier, Ramsdale was worth about four goals to Arsenal. So if you put in an average Premier League keeper at every category, you'd have expect Arsenal to concede four more goals than they did. Similarly, if you put a bang average goalkeeper in Brentford's goal, you'd have expected Brentford to concede about 11 more goals than they did. Wow. So in terms of ranking in the Premier League, this is where Raya came fourth. Uh, Allison was, was, was number one, by the way. But this is where Raya came fourth. Don't know how he didn't get nominated for that uh, goalkeeper Yashin Award <laughs> at the Palme d'Or because it's wild. But yeah, so Raya came in fourth. Ramsdale came in seventh. So when people were sort of discussing at the end of the season, like it was something to do with, obviously he had the Southampton game, which wasn't great. But when people were discussing, is it to do with Ar uh, Ramsdale that Arsenal have dropped off? Is it the Saliba thing? What's going on? I think it was pretty harsh on Ramsdale. He put in a really solid season. Um, obviously, I understand that a team charging for the title will probably want a goalkeeper in the top three or four. Um, but I thought for finishing seventh was a was, was a solid season, for especially because it was only his second full season at, at Arsenal. Um, so, yeah, that's where they both came out. And one thing is to say now is that just because David Raya was plus 11 for Brentford doesn't mean he can go to Arsenal and emulate that necessarily. Like, because there's a whole different playing style. So he's going to face different types of shots. Maybe there's shots that he doesn't excel at. He's going to take, face different types of passes uh, in terms of back passes and different types of crosses and through balls. So it's not a direct translation. And when we work with clubs, we actually have a metric for this, for forecasting how a goalkeeper will do at a new club based on the different types of situations they'll face because we have an understanding of how good they are at all the situations and then it's well which situations they're going to face this new club more than likely so and additionally something that stats really can't do and you need a little bit of love for the player and understanding of the player to do this 
I don't know how David Raya is going to go from playing in front of the second lowest attendance in the Premier League yes. to playing in front of whatever it is the third or fourth highest. Um, so that is a whole psychological element that for goalkeepers, probably more than other positions, will affect them more. So this metric here just shows how they played last season. It doesn't necessarily mean, wow, obvious choice, put Raya straight in because there's there's various things that it, that it doesn't count for. But, I think that I think that's an excellent point. You know, yeah. not only playing in front of an Emirates uh, stadium, but also the pressure that goes with being with the Arsenal, whether you're travelling yeah. home or away. I think also the style of play. You know, we are ball dominant. We don't. We have much of the ball, whereas Brentford perhaps would would face more shots, more threats, more under more pressure. So it's going to be really interesting. I know you've got the table for comparing stats from uh, this season. Of course, David Raya hasn't played yet but i did want to focus on the gray bit if we may just yeah. before we finish off shot stopping value it's a negative and it's in the gray which means he's not in the in the top sort of rankings in the league ramsdale talk us talk us through that if you don't mind john yeah so well there's been a lot i think made of this on social media because opta's model has been sort of pushed out there where ramsdale's minus 1.8 and bottom of the goalkeepers at the moment but that's mm-hmm. i've talked about his loads before but the, the model they use doesn't include a lot of parameters and one of them is shot velocity. And basically that model, I wouldn't really trust ever because for example, the goal he conceded against Fulham, not the long range one, but the one from the corner, that model thinks should be saved like 75% of the time, which is obviously can't be correct because it's a corner that's come in, he's hit it from the near post yeah. and it's gone all the way across him into the corner. And similarly, I think it's, he made a one-on-one save against Fulham and that model thinks it should be saved like 98% of the time. And I'm like, I don't think That's, any one-on-one. It was a great is, save. <laughs> yeah, he came out, spread, hit his forearm. Yeah. It's no way. Like, yes, I understand that it wasn't the Gosh. best finish. It wasn't roof of the net. But th- that model has problems. Our model obviously still has Ramsdale as minus. It has him as minus one. But this is, I think, the third or fourth lowest in the Premier League. So it's not right at the bottom. And it basically is all driven by that Pereira goal. And we can talk about that in a second. But basically... Ramsdale so far, he's, he's faced 11 shots. He's made five routine saves. And we call that anything that's saved above 95% of the time. So like really slow or not in the corner, straightforward. He's done all of those, saved five out of five. But then he's made two one-on-one saves, one against Palace, one against Fulham. And then he's let in um, the, the shot against Iwoni, the shot against Polina, and the shot against Rashford. And we think that basically they cancel out. From those five shots, you'd expect two to be saved, two to go in, uh, three to go in. And that's happened. But... So he's bang on average there. But then basically the Pereira shot, our model thinks, should only go in about 5% of the time. And that's because of the pace on the shot and the fact it's not near the corner. And what's actually happened here, um, looking back at it and looking at the, the shot, is Ramsdale started really high and wide for a potential yeah. back pass from Saka. And the model doesn't think any other goalkeeper would end up there. They think the goalkeeper will probably start just on the corner of the D, just on the edge of the box. And so when that pass happens, they get back to their six-yard box comfortably. Whereas Ramsdale, actually, he has to make up more ground horizontally than he does vertically because he's gone so wide for the back pass. So obviously there's the scramble moment where he's trying to get back and then basically anywhere on target was going to be a goal because he was almost facing backwards, basically, because he had to make up so much ground. So for me, I don't know if I blame Ramsdale too much for that because I think he said in interviews before, like Mikel wants to play him in crazy high positions. And he's often like in the training ground really you want me there yeah. so like i don't think obviously it is a mistake because other goalkeepers wouldn't have put themselves in that position thus wouldn't have let him such a weak shot but i think it's a four game sample size and he's basically been solid other than that that one goal so for me that that gray bit isn't a huge issue obviously if we're 15 20 games further in the season and he's still not made enough saves to outweigh that and he's still in the negative that might be a problem but Right now, I think a little bit too much has been made of basically one moment defining his whole season shot-stopping value anyway. Yeah, it, it was painful to watch that back on the television. And of course, we were trying to party it right back. There was a big gaping hole. And I think Pereira actually mishit the ball as well. So, yeah. yeah, it just looked like a bit of a mess in slow-mo. I mean, keeping the focus on on Aaron, um, how does he respond now? Because obviously, we, you know, like we've alluded to, David Ryer is an established goalkeeper, played 38 out of 38 last season in the Premier League. He is the older keeper, about to enter his prime years, playing for a coach or being trained by a coach who knows him and loves him. Ramsell, of course, playing for England last night against Scotland. I mean, he's not done anything wrong, really. So how does he respond? Does he 
does he accept the challenge? Is he? Do you think he might be prepared to sit on the bench? Well, you know, you you mentioned earlier, Arteta might be ruthless and maybe part company with him in in a year or two. I mean, yeah, what do you think he's going to do? Well, I think knowing Ramsdale and knowing his personality, or at least what he portrays to the media and the things he's done in the past, like I think Ramsdale will definitely be up for the battle and wouldn't be phased by sitting on the bench for a few games at all. Um, I think one thing he does have is a is, is like youth. So like if he loses a season in inverted commas to like sitting on the bench or being a bit part player, that isn't the end of the world for him. Obviously, it will stifle his potential challenge to Jordan Pickford to be England's number one, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. So I, I think he'll I think he loves Arsenal just that, and that comes across really strongly. Um, and I think he'll try his best to stay and be number one. And I think to be honest. There's just little things in his game that if he can be pushed by Riot and improve, will really help him. So like on, on, on that past slide, we saw his distribution at the moment is, is bang on zero, which you wouldn't expect, like bang on middle of the pack average. And the reason for that is he's just not playing as many of those world-class passes. He's been much safer in his distribution. And maybe Raya will spark him into playing a lot more of those. Do you remember when he first came, that game against Aston Villa, where he just kept feeding it into Odegaard in the middle of the pitch mm. and he just kept setting up counter-attacks and stuff. He, he stopped doing that. And maybe this will spur him into that. Um, and, and similarly, the reason Ramsdale's actually dropped to that average part in his distribution is that the one pass under pressure where he ended up booting it straight into the opposition player. And luckily, it bounced out for a goal kick. But the model finds there's a 10%, I think it was, 10 15% chance of it bouncing back into his own goal. So it penalises him quite heavily for just booting it into opposition players. Because we've seen many times before, I think De Gea did a famous one against Everton, where if you bang it into an opposition player, yeah, it can ricochet anywhere. Sometimes it can go straight in the goal. Sometimes it can set up another player for a tap-in, etc. It's not the, the best thing to do. So hopefully Ramsdale's little mistakes on the ball, I think I've mentioned previously, there was no goalkeeper who kicked out of his hands more into the back of an opponent than Ramsdale last season. I think he did it three times and no other keeper did that. So it's those little mistakes like that that cause a bit of disruption that hopefully Raya can push out of his game. And if he can get back to playing those world-class passes, not making mistakes on the ball, like obviously we saw against Southampton as well, I think it could be a, a great season for him. Um, but yeah, he does have the sort of psychological issue of if he isn't quite there, I don't doubt that Mikel Arteta will be ruthless and put David Raya straight into the into the fold. Once again, John, this has been an education and I hope everybody who's tuning into this has agreed. I mean, what a just so insightful as always to end the feature i'm gonna ask you a couple of just quick fire questions i don't want to get your yeah. instinctive reaction so first up if i had to say to you john right come the end of the season um whatever you know 34 premier league games to play which of these two goalkeepers do you think is going to end up playing more premier league games this season uh, i would instinctively say ramsdale i think it's his to lose but the fact it is on a loan and makes me think that it feels like some sort of short term thing but assuming no injuries i'm gonna say ramsdale for that okay and uh one for the longer term again instinctively who do you think will be arsenal number one in let's say two years time out of these two i'm gonna go again with ramsdale but i think this one is much closer so i think let i think let's say it's like a bit of a longer answer to this like if the loan then gets made permanent for whatever reason because he does up really well in the Champions League or the League Cup or the FA Cup or whatever, I then think there, there must be a plan in there to give him a lot of game time. So, yeah, I think it's what it is. I was excited as you are to see what happens because they're both top goalkeepers and I both I just love watching top goalkeepers play in goal and seeing what they do and seeing how they perform. So I'm excited to see what happens. Like you said at the start, though, obviously I'm not an Arsenal fan, but after being on this podcast, I have a little bit of a feeling for them. I want them to do well. And I, like, I don't, I wouldn't want it to be to the detriment of Arsenal. Like the worst thing I want to see is like neither goalkeeper playing well, both are, like falling out and it not being good for, for Arsenal. So I just, yeah, I hope it's exciting. They both push each other. And I'm just looking forward to see what Mikel does, because like you said, this might be a new thing that in the next five years, we're like, obviously you have two number ones. That's how it has to be done right now. It's a weird, it's an odd thing. It's potentially a problem, but maybe Mikel's doing something like when Pep starts playing fullbacks in midfield and midfielders at fullback and all that sort of stuff that he did that now is commonplace or the thing where players stand on the ball and just wait and wait and wait for people to press and then play that's done at Man City, Arsenal, Brighton, all the top ball playing clubs do it now. When that first started, people were always like, oh, this is weird. This is a risk. This is dangerous. Why are you doing that? But now 
we see it as normal part and parcel of the game. And maybe that's that's what'll happen with having two number ones in your team. Maybe. And just out of curiosity, who was second and third in your top three uh, of last season? <laughs> not good, not good reading for for Arsenal, but Martinez and Leno. Uh, Martinez, obviously, the only reason he left Arsenal was he, he fell out with everyone and he's one of those big of personalities. We've seen at Argentina, he's a top goalkeeper, but he's one of those where it needs to be about him, I think. It needs, he needs to be the big guy and he doesn't want people interrupting that. And I think he fell out with Arteta, so that was always going to be a problem. And he obviously did well for you, he won you trophies, so Martinez. But then Leno is the weird one and it's continued into this season. He's just in the form of his life. And I don't know whether that is a thing where, you know, we talked about Raya moving to Arsenal, might not fully replicate his form. Maybe Leno playing for Fulham, who obviously good Premier League club, but a much smaller club, especially in following to Arsenal. Maybe that just helps him out. And maybe the less pressure on him now means he can really excel and play at his best. So I think it's one of those where you can see it as a, oh, wow, we let two top goalkeepers go. But you can also see it as maybe they needed somewhere else to excel because potentially the pressure and the situation wasn't quite right at, at Arsenal for those goalkeepers to show their show their best. Yeah, and so, some players just need a change of scenery. Uh, and and listen, Burnt was always a, a good shot stopper. I think everybody was just frustrated uh, with his ball distribution. And we've seen yeah. the impact that Ramsdale has made. Thank you so much, John. Really appreciate that. We've just come over the 40-minute mark. So if you're still watching, please do drop a like on the video. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, subscribe to the channel, of course, if you're new and uh, just get involved in some of the content uh, and uh, get involved in the chat. If anybody wants to follow John, he is available on Twitter or X, as I should say. <laughs> His handle there is on screen at JHD Harrison one. You can find all of his work at the goalkeeping, uh, goalkeeping academy.com. Goalkeeper.com. Yeah. Goal, sorry, goalkeeper.com. My apologies. Goalkeeper.com. But of course you are a familiar face and increasingly familiar face now on Sky Sports and so many other media outlets. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate your insight as per normal. Uh, until next time, um, yeah, take care of yourselves. Uh, do get involved in some of the content, like I've said, but it is now. Bye for now.